Hey, hey, welcome to Jeff Tech Metal Garage. <laughs> Greetings, Metal Garage viewers. Welcome to Jeff Tech's Metal Garage, coming to you live from my basement. So, I did a thing about seven or eight months ago. Uh, I was actually at a point where I was a little bit bored. And I was looking for a project so I put a ping out to the universe and uh, I wound up with more than one project first off I got this 19 or 2007 CBR 125 fuel injected engine and I had the brilliant idea I was gonna put that into a shifter card or something uh, never dawned on me that I'm going to need a wiring harness, I'm going to need a CDI spark box for the plug, I'm going to need a coil, I'm going to need a CPU, yeah those run about 200 bucks on the Evil Bay, uh, what else, I'm going to need a starter solenoid, I'm going to need a starter switch, yeah I'm going to need a lot of stuff for this project. Uh, there's not really much to look at. I'll show it to you here. And, uh, yeah, see, here's the got, the got the wiring harness from the UK. I got the, the coil plug just kind of sitting here right now. I got that from eBay. I got the, this is the final piece of the puzzle. I got the CDI, the, uh, I mean, the ECU. I got this from the UK and it was only about 50 bucks so I held out I thought this was cheap when I got this see I thought this was the brain this uh, this is the CDI this is the ignition module so when I bought this I thought I was good to go and I thought this was just the um, I don't know the, the data the data thing but nah it turns out I did the whole thing you can see I jank it out of here. It's still got flu it's still got coolant in there. It's full of coolant. It's got the E fan. See that's connected. It's a CDI connected. I got the the brains are connected. We're even plugged in here at the fuel injector. Um, I got a fuel pump down here. I bought a separate ignition switch. I've got all the wiring diagram and everything. And I can actually turn it over if I just jump the uh, if I just jump the starter. But she's clean, and it's a project. So that was the first project that I wound up with. That was just, that was, you understand, that was just the first one. Which brings me to this project. Yeah, what you're looking at is the bottom half, the crank, transmission for a 1982 Suzuki GS 650 G. That's right. I wound up with this project. And it's an interesting story. You're going to love it. I basically got this off of Facebook Marketplace about eight, nine months ago. Like I said, I was looking for a project. Sent a ping out to the universe. When I first saw this project, I think he was asking three or four thousand dollars. Not just for this engine, but the whole motorcycle and everything involved. Stick with me here. So I watched it for a few more weeks and it went down, it went down, it went down. And I don't know, one morning I woke up and it was $700. Well, being that he was here in Maple Ridge, I messaged him. He got right back to me and I went over immediately and checked out this project. And yeah, it's a project. We got. The upper part of the case we got the cylinder head here and I hone these out with that dingle ball hone you see right over there and there's a little bit there's a little bit of staining on one or two of these cylinders that one's the worst right there but I dingle ball holding them with the finest one that they had I used WD-40 as the lubricant 
and I pretty much ran them until they have a nice cross hatch on them. Now, all these items have been vapor honed, and yeah, there's a little bit of pitting on that one, but this is a piece of metal from 1982, you guys. Man, look at that. Look at that. Look how clean that is. I mean, really. Um, I just got these sitting on here. I think they're, I think they're transposed. I think uh, A B C D. I think it's supposed to be A B C D, but whatever. They're just on there, finger tight. They all have the standard shims. They're all exactly the same. And then I pop the valves in there. And they're looking pretty good. Get you under here. Whoa, too far. Yeah, I get you under here. Look at those valves. Real clean. Only one of them leaked any. Only one of them leaked any assembly lube. But here I got the clutch basket. Don't lift it up or that nut will fall out. I got the stator and the gear that drives the oil pump. I put new bearings in there. And again, look at this engine cover. Look at that thing. I mean, it's just, it's insanely clean. So, here's the, here's the gear off the rear cam that drives, or is that the front? That's the front. That's the front cam. And that drives the uh, speedometer, the tachometer. And yeah, look how clean that is. I mean, it's just so incredibly clean. Here's the, here's the pistons. They're standard size. Rings look good. Everything looks really good on them. I cleaned up the carbon on the top. And then I even got the uh, an OEM, an OEM kit, standard 62 millimeter ring set. See that? 62.00 standard. S standard ring kit for those. So all I've got to do is put the oil squirter here, here, and here. And then I'm waiting for some Honda Bond that's coming tomorrow. I've got this stuff that the original owner bought but it says silicone I don't know I think you're supposed to use the Yami bond or Honda bond Suzuki bond apparently they're all the same but somebody says that the Honda bond is the best so you know I don't want to go against the interwebs but uh, let's put you here and let's oh let's put you down where are you going come here so yeah check this out close up of the transmission we're gonna just run her through her paces here so that's that's first gear. There's neutral. There's second gear. You can tell by the way that it is. I see. I want you to see the output shaft. And then third gear. Fourth gear. And fifth gear. So that's final drive. You can see these are all turning. This is turning a one to one. This is a one-to-one, -one, obviously, shaft drive. This model year, the 81 to 83, they also made the same engine in chain drive, interestingly enough. But this is a shaft drive version. Now, let me tell you how I got this. This is the really interesting part. I got this from an Israeli army uh, helicopter mechanic. And so he came to Canada, I guess, and living here happily. Oh, so this engine, this project, this whole motorcycle project, because it's got the frame, it's already been bobbed in the back, welded. It's got a fiberglass tray. Um, it's got Yamaha inverted forks on it. Um, uh, obviously, it's all been vapor honed and blasted. I mean, 
you could literally eat off of this clutch cover. That's the oil, that's the oil witness window. Um, yeah, I've never seen anything this clean. Every time I turn that off, I, I, I lose the, the one way, <laughs> the, the one way clutch. That's why I got it in here so I don't pick it up. But you see, we've got the, we got the stator core coil. We've got the, the, the twin pickups. It's a complete project because it belonged to a helicopter mechanic. So he's got everything labeled here. I did not disassemble this motor. As a matter of fact, I've reassembled it to this blown up situation you see here. I put the uh, I put the valves together. I put the bottom end together, and it's all just from common sense, witness marks, lining things up. You see there's two little pins here that locate these bearings forward. There's a little, there's a, a recess here that locates this shaft into the top of the cover. And it's all just kind of common sense figuring it out. I got the book. This was a hundred dollars alone. So he spent roughly, now this isn't me, he spent roughly seven thousand dollars on this project to this level right here. He got the bike I think for fifteen hundred bucks and there's going to be a link to this YouTuber's opening. He, play, he placed two videos on the on the YouTube, on the internet, uh, about his intentions for this motorcycle. And then he got called back to be a, uh, uh, an officer. So right now he is in officer training in, in, in the Israeli army. And uh, I've got his project for $700. I mean, he gave me tools, he gave me equipment, he gave me all the gaskets, the frame, the title, I mean everything. I got it, it was, it, it couldn't, for $700, I mean for $700, this, this, this digital computer, computerized dash, it goes to 12,000 RPM, it's got all your indicators and it's programmable 100%. This was $400 alone. Uh, the anti-gravity battery that you may have seen in my uh, Suzuki tune-up video we used overnight while we were waiting for the correct battery to come in. The tiny little anti-gravity battery. He spent $400 for that battery. It was $200 US for the battery and then it was another $140 for the duties and customs and shipping to get it here to Canada. So this guy, he was really determined, but in his rationalization of the project, he wanted a naked bike and he priced them brand new and they came out to be about $10,000. So he decided he wanted to build a naked bike using the older technology, you know, the carburetors and everything, no digitals. And so he allotted himself $10,000. I mean, he's a helicopter mechanic, so he must have had the money for it. But, uh, saw that for three thousand and then two thousand and eleven hundred and then one day it was seven hundred bucks i mean i couldn't really say no so i've gone through obviously i had to locate all the stuff from bins and boxes this is literally my first basket case but everything looks really good i mean the crank bearings are great i replaced them anyway because you're here apparently this motor had about seventy thousand miles on it so there's no there's no end play and on, on these conrods, there's no reason to take them apart or even change the bearings. Those things are in perfect condition. But being that the uh, the crank bearings are exposed and they were really cheap on uh, on Partzilla, I just changed them. I put new ones in the top. I got new ones in the bottom. This thing's sitting here basically waiting on the Honda Loop. Going to show up tomorrow from the Zon. The Honda Bond, I mean. Honda Bond from the Zon. We're going to get that on there tomorrow. And I did some research. Apparently you just put really thin, thin layer on both sides. 
both the cases together and apparently that cures in about an hour. Now you don't want to use RTV, you don't want to use anything silicone based. And the stuff that he left me, this 1211 bond, it says right on the thing, silicone liquid gasket. Well, I use this on my Honda, my 1999 Honda CBR 600 F4, the last year of the carburetor. I use this on the stator cover after I broke it when I wiped out back in August. Um, broke the, shattered the cover, shattered the stator cover, stator, 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 stator cover and shattered it and then when I went to put a new cover on I used some of this stuff and it didn't work at all so uh, I think I'm gonna just toss that stuff in the trash I missed and here I have some Permatex aviation form of gasket that he also left me I'm not sure what that's for I'm not gonna risk it so I did the right thing and I ordered a $30 tube that's $30 Canadian for two ounces Wait a minute, ounces are US, why am I paying Canadian for ounces? Anyway, $30 for uh, two ounces of Honda Bond, but it's in stock, it'll be here tomorrow, it is what it is. I'm glad I didn't spend $7,000 on this project, I'd be really frustrated. So yeah, we're gonna get the oil squirters in the top part here. I've got the, these are the oil squirter gaskets, I guess that, uh, that hold them in there. You only need three, there's three, there's one in the middle and then there's one on either end and that just comes right from, I figured the, the oil passage, it comes right from the oil pump and goes directly, the oil pump is here and it comes up this, this passage, that passage goes into this passage and then that passage puts basically oil down onto the crank and up into the camshaft area the transmission is self lubricated and all these uh, bearings are located and see like I said all this, this was all in pieces this was all in pieces just a few weeks ago so I'm trying to consolidate this we're gonna get this engine together sealed up and then I could push it out of the way because literally this entire table was dedicated to this entire project I never had any intention of doing any other projects but now I've launched this channel and you know I want to get this I want to get this Honda running I want to get this mini trail 50 running from 1972 you saw that in the last video and uh yeah I want to get this guy running and I don't have any room <laughs> so Mr. Helicopter Mechanic he even left me this you guys anybody ever seen one of these does anybody have any idea what this is this is a stud remover tool it's a power built one quarter to three quarter inch stud remover um, number six four eight six three nine and yeah so when it comes to taking the studs from here it comes to taking the studs out of the head you know a lot of guys will use uh, vice grips or they'll use the double nut method but this is the correct I believe this is like he's a he's a helicopter mechanic not me I do have a helicopter and I have worked on it and yeah it's upside down hanging from the ceiling because I don't have any room this is an old Raptor 60 I'm not getting off the subject but uh, yeah I really like fixing stuff and this is going to be a challenge to me because personally I've always had that ability, like the, the remember game, the Husker do, whatever you want to call it. You know, I take something apart and then I just instinctively remember how to put things back together. Like I could literally take anything apart and then generally like put it all back together. Well, lately I've been really testing myself and really challenging myself. And like when I, I fix that thumb actuated door handle thing, it just turns up and down motion into turns linear up and down motion into circular open your door motion the thing was in pieces and I literally had to just inference how to get it back together so I'm kind of doing the same thing with this I know how engines go together I've rebuilt Kawasaki's I rebuilt Honda's I rebuilt a uh, Harley a 67 Harley Sportster I rebuilt a lot of motorcycles and 
you know, I have that memory. I had that memory ability, but this is going to be my very first try at rebuilding a motorcycle engine that I did not take apart myself. So welcome to my challenge. Welcome to Jeff Tech Metal Garage. Thanks for joining me. We're right around the 15 minute mark, I guess here maybe. And uh, have a great day, you guys. I really appreciate you joining me and stick around. We're gonna throw this thing together starting tomorrow. That'll be, that'll be part two of the 650 Katana. And right there you can see, this is just some of the anti-gravity battery paperwork. He left me a whole spreadsheet even. He, the guy left me a spreadsheet of all the equipment, all the parts, pieces that he was going to order, and every one of those even had the link to the website that they were going to come from. Whether it was the, the Zon, or the Zilla, or the what have you. He had the link in the spreadsheet, you just click on it, and then he had the, if it was ordered, if it wasn't ordered, how much it cost, how many were needed. So I basically went through that spreadsheet and I ordered the stuff that I wanted to order. Like I ordered the, the main bearings because like I said, we're here. I ordered um, the new piston rings because it just seemed like they're standard and I think it was $44 for original OEM Suzuki standard bearings or uh, piston rings. So right now on the on the Honda 250 I'm just waiting for another intake manifold. I fixed this one with the right stuff and I think it would actually work. I think that this would actually work in a pinch. I mean that, that right stuff is just awesome. I mean obviously this is not vulcanized. This is, this is just room temperature vulcanized I guess. But that goes on to the, oops, sorry. That goes on to the, or that, that's what holds on. Let's see, it's got that little bend to it. So it sits, sits like that. And this is for the, this is for the 250. And see, it's a nice tight fit. I mean, this would work in a pinch, but I did the right thing and I ordered a new one. It was $90. So yeah, I might just put this one in the parts bin. But look at this. This carburetor is from my 1983 XL 250. I mean, look how clean that thing is. I mean, really, that's just 1983, and it's that clean. I mean, it's really amazing. So 83, this is 82. I guess I'm still stuck in the 80s, but I worked at Champion Cycle in Chicago, and I was building new motorcycles between 83 and 87. And so this is not my first time at the rodeo at all. But I really like to challenge myself here. I got this 125 fuel injected. We got this one going. It's gonna be fun to just throw this on there and get that going. So again, thanks for visiting. Thanks for the support. I really appreciate it. I mean, I really, really do. I, I would do this without YouTube, but YouTube is the one that made me build a drift trike. YouTube is the one that made me buy a one wheel and then fall on my shoulder, but that's part of it. YouTube taught me health, and diet, exercise. YouTube has taught me so many things. And honestly, before COVID, I never really watched YouTube very much. So thanks, you guys. Thanks for the support. And have a great day. Jeff Tech at Metal Garage.